70 times as a professional during a golden era for the heavyweight boxing in this country and whose finest hour came when he captured the British Commonwealth and European titles at the age of 31. He is, of course, Jack Bodell. Jack, it happened pretty late for you, you know, your, your, uh, your biggest night, as it were. My success, yeah. Um, I had a lot of success in early in my career, Barry, but I couldn't get the, the success I deserved till later on in life. They wouldn't allow me in. You had a lot of fights now, uh, I mean, you, you're, you had 71 professional fights in total, but I mean, that, that is awesome in comparison to some of the fighters these days, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Well, I had 10 fights, Barry, in 64 days, and they used to call me the busy bee. How did you get into the game, fight game in the first place? Well, originally I started off, my, my uncle was a, an old pro boxer, Tom Bodle, and right in the war years, I can want to uh, my dad wouldn't tell him that he... He topped a bill in uh, Matlock Bath one Sunday morning for two and sixpence, and the press wanted two shillings of him, of him for giving him a good write-up. And that's how I started off. I started off with my Uncle Tom. Um, and then I went to Coville as a, as a lad. Uh, Coville Amateur Boxing Club, run by a, a police superintendent, Lee. And uh, he got me a few fights at 17 years of age, which... Then I used to travel about with my cousin, who was a bit older than me. He was the dr van driver, mm -hmm. and I was his passenger. You walked down the pit? Yes. And uh, he used to drive to London, and I used to second him, and he used to second me. When he fought Billy Walker and Dave Thomas and people like that, and I fought Johnny Oward. And we used to drive like that, never realising what had happened if John got knocked out, and I would have get back home. Let's have a look at your professional record. As I said, an amazing amount of fights. 71 professional fights, and uh, your career spanned a decade and a bit. It, amazing stuff. Yeah, I, I think it wasn't a bad record that I got. Obviously, I had some uh, losses that uh, were through cut eyes. I had two cut eyes. I had one, I think, I broke a thumb, I think. But otherwise, uh, you know, no, no qualms to grind. So let's, uh, uh, let's talk about the pinnacle of your career, the Joe Bugner fight. Um, now, obviously, he was the flavour of the month, having be beaten Cooper, and you were very much the underdog. Well, as you know, Joe used to... Uh, uh, Andy Smith used to bring Joe as apprentice over to my gymnasium a long, long time before I fought Joe. And I always knew that I could beat Joe. You sparred with him, did you? Yeah. I always knew I could beat Joe. I could fight him to death. And I did do the same night as I fought him. I said to him, if, if he shows his left hand, I said, I'll show you this left hand and I'll hit you with his right. But you weren't exactly a young chicken at that age, 31 years old, and, and very much smaller than he was. Yes, Joe was about 17 stone and was about 6 foot 4. I was about 6 foot 1 and a half and about 14 and a half stone. But it um, didn't the weight, uh, it's the ambition, and I've got plenty of ambition. And, uh, I mean, he had a lot of publicity. Did you, did you feel like you wanted a... a set the record straight and put him in his place, as it were. Well, as you know, if you live in the sticks like I do, Barry, you've got to be three times as good a fighter as you have to live as if you live in London, to maybe to be recognised. So, the 31-year-old Jack up against the man, 10 years his junior, all three titles on the line at Wembley that night. It was September 1971. And this crowd here tonight at Wembley have made it very plain indeed to Joe Bugner that he better succeed or else because they're not going to have any mercy if he doesn't beat Bodell. The young man has to prove himself tonight at the age of 21. And the atmosphere here now is absolutely electric as they come together. Jack Bodell, 31. Joe Budner, 21. And Bodell is going to start this full of fireworks as he always does. And these first few rounds are going to be the really testing moments for Joe Book. We knew he would. Bodell is going to try and nail him in the opening rounds.
giving Bugna more trouble in these opening few seconds of this fight than Henry Cooper did. gives Bugner time to rethink. And Bugner stands there and looks at him and wonders what's coming next. He must have been prepared for this. Everybody told him Bodo would start like this. But all the same, the pressure is really on this young champion. Almost cruel the way this Wembley crowd is willing Bodell to beat him. Bodell's done all the attacking in the opening round and has taken it. Well, everybody warned Joe Bugner what to expect from Bodell in the opening round, so he won't be too surprised. But the pressure bearing down on this 21-year-old British, European and Commonwealth heavyweight champion must be almost intolerable, because he must feel it's not just Bodell he's got against him, but he's got thousands of people outside the ring, all of them against him as well. And the cry goes up now, not for Bugner, but for Bodell. The long reach of Bugner, now beginning to tell a bit. And Bugner's getting this left jab working, and it's working well now. And he's written Bodell's face on the right-hand side. Got his elbow down to block that one. Bodell coming in open-mouthed, as he always does. And Bugner now beginning to slip inside the attacks of Bodell and countering well with the left. And this round will have given Bugner a lot of confidence. <laughs> Bodell has come forward most of the time, he's done the chasing, but he hasn't scored quite as often as Bugner. And you must give this round by a shade to the champion. Bodell didn't do the forcing as much as he did in the first. Well, that's the opening ploys out of the way. Bodell made his effort in the first round, and he did take Bugner out of his stride, but not enough. Bugner's come back in the second with some good, sharp punching, and has begun to get the left jab to work. So now we've really got this thing on the road. So now I've got Bodell just slightly ahead, a quarter of a point ahead on my card. That's the stuff you can hear, the cries again coming from Bugner's corner. Get that jab going. That's what he's got to do, he mustn't stand around.
Bodell's 68th fight tonight. What the Bugner corner must be hoping is to get Joe successfully through these early few rounds and then hope that the 10 years difference in age will begin to tell against Bodell. And remember that Bugner has also got a stone in weight advantage. underneath as Bodell went lunging in. He leaves himself so wide open with these swings. How about that then? Bugner felt confident enough to stand there and swap him with Bodell. I'd like to bet that wasn't in the instructions from the corner. Both these men are having to really work for every point. He didn't move him at all. And that was a pretty even round there between those two. They both swapped punches. And it would be difficult to pick between them there, although Bodell was more aggressive. So four rounds completed, and Bodell's made the sort of start we expected. He was sure to come out like this. He does it in every fight. The point is, how long can he keep it up? Because, Jack, if he doesn't win a fight early on, in the later rounds, tends to plod a little bit. But the experience is there, a pro nearly 10 years, 67 fights, he's won 57, he's lost 10, but the only man to beat him in the last five years has been Henry Cooper. Second up, round five. and he gets them in, Bodell. Henry Cooper said that Bodell will be the most awkward customer Bugner's ever faced, and he's dead right. Those punches come from angles that Bugner's probably never experienced before. We're over a minute into this fifth round, and Bugner's not settled down in it yet. Challenger moving around the ring, circling the ring all the time and not giving Bugner much of a target for the left hand. Bugner's standing there very much at bay. Jabbing punches from Bodell 
getting through to the head of Bugner. This is not a good round for the champion. Bodol picking him off now more or less as he likes. And Bugner will have to do a lot better than this if he's going to keep the title. But we've still a long way to go. He's getting past the defence. This is a worse run for Bugner than the first. He's hardly laid a glove on Bodell. Bugner's not got his boxing going at all in this one. He's looked a sorry sight there. He's taken everything Bodell's handed out. A thoroughly bad round for the champion. Bodell right on top with the initiative. Let's see what Bugner can do about it. Because he surely must do something better than he did in that last one. Standing there as though he just can't get his arms working. He wants to do something, but he can't let the punches come. only one thing to do here for Bugner. He's got to pump that left hand out. That's his principal weapon, his best one. And he's got to keep that in Bodell's face. home almost every attack. Occasionally spurring Bugner into bursts of action, but Bugner looks jaded and very unhappy. It's clearly been Bodal's round. He's got through with every head attack he's thrown. And Bugner can do nothing but hold on. Jack, you, the fight fight. must have been going better than you'd, you'd, you'd possibly imagine. Uh, I'm always coming on strong. Um, I always, I always uh, fancied uh, to beat Bugner. I never had any doubts about uh, I'd beat him. Uh, but everybody uh, was standing because I beat him so easy. But I think I outgunned Joe. I got too much art for him. What had been your tactical plan? Well, uh, my, my main tactical plan was to stop Joe throwing his left jab, which he did. 
because I said to him, I chained with right, my right hand and hit him with my left, which I did do when Joe tried, he used his left jab. Somewhere, somehow, Joe Bugner, the 21-year-old champion, has got to pull his boxing together and get the jab working, otherwise he can say goodbye to the championship. Incredible, really, with Bugner. He's like a statue in the ring, hardly throwing a punch. Nowhere near the performance he put on against Cooper. Now that's what he's got to do, and he better get going with it. Bugner's head, and it looks to me as though Bugner might have some sort of damage near his left eye. And that is a very rare thing with Bugner. Some sort of mark up there by that eye book, no, but it's nothing serious. It's been a slightly better run for the champion, but not that much. He's got his jab working occasionally. Seems almost to need a great effort of will for him to put that left hand out. That's a good punch. That's a better round for Bugner, and he's managed to stem the tide a little. It was going dead against him. He's been quite immobile tonight, Bugner. It's been amazing. He boxed very much better than this against Cooper. And really, he stood around like a statue tonight with Bodell, and he's let Bodell hit him with everything. I've got him three quarters of a point down at this stage, with eight rounds left. So he's got to win three rounds to pull level. Second out. Round eight. <laughs> when he does let that left jab go, it's a fair old punch. And he takes Bodell right off balance with it. with a much shorter reach. Everything now is likely to depend whether Bodell can keep the pace up. He 
He's always been a very fit man. But he is 31, and he's 10 years older. And we're now only halfway through this fight. very little in this round. Another good left hand from Bodell. It's a good job Bugner can take a punch. Bodell is really coming after this title tonight. And it's another good round for the challenger. Jack, you had incredible support there. Was that because of what Bogner done to Cooper, or was it, did you bring a gang of them with you? I always had good support here, uh, boxing in London uh, and that. I always used to have two or three loads of supporters following me. Always had good support. Super. We've got to think in terms, if Bogner's going to win this fight, that he's going to have to stop this man because it's beginning to look very dark for whether he can outpoint him. Two things tell the story of this fight so far. The relentless determination and sheer guts of Bodell in taking the fight to the younger man all the time. And this extraordinary immobility of Bugner. The continual posing, the standing there without pushing the punches out. He should have dominated it with the left hand and he hasn't done it. finishing touches to these little exchanges.
that flogging left hand which has tormented Bugner all night still crashes in to that blonde head as though it's drawn there by some invisible cord. was off balance, I don't know whether he was hurt but he's holding on a bit Bugner certainly caught him with the left hand could this be a turning point in the 12th if Bugner pulls this out it'll be a miracle and he's got him hurt two more left hands and Bodell is hanging on and we have got the makings of a major sensation here Bugner's hurting him. And maybe the years are catching up with Jack Bodell. And Jack looks very tottery indeed. What an amazing thing this will be. And Bodell draws strength again from somewhere. again and he's almost down and we've got 50 seconds of this amazing round remaining and Bugner has a chance to win and can you believe that He was pushed, but Bodell is having to hang on, and the years have suddenly caught up with him. Jack, that was a horrendous round for you. Tough round. That was. I was just. I was just uh, starting to feel uh, the pressure of the 13, uh, 12 rounds previously. Uh, to pressurising Joe all the while, and I, I started allowing Joe to get his left hand to me, which you know I, I tried to uh, null before, and uh, I was allowing Joe. So this next round, I think I, I get back into my normal routine of uh, trying to stop Joe using his left hand. in on it if he can do it his only chance Bugner has not capitalised on the 12th round. He stood around too much and he's posed too much again and his chance might have gone. So we've got two to go and we saw in the 12th that it is still possible for Bugner to win this. He could perhaps still stop his man 
and that's his only chance because he's too far behind, on my card anyway, to win this on points. A very long way behind. So he's got to come out now and nail Bodell. And he's seen himself the way it can be done. So it's do or die for Bugner if he's going to stop Bodell walking home with the titles. You've really got to hand it to Jack Bodell. He's come through that sticky patch of the 12th, and here he is now in the 14th, still hunting his man, and still looking reasonably fresh. My bet is that Bodell is very nearly drained of all his resources because he's put everything into this fight and he's never stopped coming forward. Bandage working loose from Bugner's right glove. standing around again and he's knocked the gum shield right out of Bodell's mouth and right down into our laps here <laughs> now he's going now he's working but why hasn't he done it before just under a minute of this round to go and Bugner again has a chance capable of setting up a sustained attack Do you think oh, I'm just going to play safe in the last round? No, I, I, I continued with my old uh, pattern uh, of trying to stop Joe using his left jab. That's what was happening here. This is the way you knocked him down. Well, obviously, Joe uh, with the right face and uh, brought me right round to it, hit him straight on the chin, you see. And uh, to be honest with you, John, Joe didn't want to know too much about it. You know, uh, let's be quite honest, uh, I should have tried to grab him. If it had been vice versa. Yeah. And what might have happened if Bodell had done that earlier? Nice and Bugner's got to stop him to win now. He's either got to knock him out or stop him. But the way things went towards the end of the 14th, Bugner will be lucky if he doesn't get knocked out himself if Bodell mounts another attack like that. This championship battle has had 10,000 people at Wembley on their feet. Of nights for Jack Bodell. Never
never fought better in his life. He came to take these titles, and it's 100 to 1 on now that he's going to take them. Bugner hanging on, doesn't know what to do. through the last and it's ending in this wild slugging match Bodell has only got to stand up to win Just to coin Harry's phrase, you never fought better in your life, he says. No, uh, I think I think I worked the strategy out well, Barry. I, I nullified what Joe got best, his left jab, and uh, I thought everything went to plan. And for 31 years old, you fought at a fantastic pace throughout that fight. Yeah, I went, I went uh, from the, the first belt to the 15th, Put pressurising Joe from the first belt to the 15th and uh, successful with it. Because I know if I stood back and let Joe get his left jab to me, then I obviously uh, it would be an uphill climb again. And he, was, he had all the physical advantages and the youth, and it must have been very satisfying for you to, to be able to finish and, and, and with the strength you did. Yeah. Uh, I think, as I said to you, Joe got everything, but there was one thing short of Joe, that was a, what I would call a bigger art. I got to go out too big for him. And uh, he had all the recognition too, of course, as well. Yes, and he had a lot easier, a lot easier climb to the top than I ever did, Barry. And uh, must be very gratifying to be able to finish him in that way. Yeah, I uh, I did all the the uh, so-called golden boys of London, Billy Walker, Joe Bugner, and uh, Henry Cooper. I fought them all, and uh, I performed fairly well with all of them. So a clean sweep, you swooped three titles there in, in one go. Where did you th what did you think that, that win would actually do for you? Well, I obviously thought I would, uh, I would get to eventually get a well, well shot. But the thing is this, to be honest with you, my manager, we made a bad, bad match with the Jerry Quarry fight. Yes, I should hear, here it is here, fighting a, a, a bit of a silly match, fighting a world-class fighter here. Talk us through this, Jerry. Well, the thing is this, I, 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 I shot my left uh, uh, hand uh, to quarry as quarry shot his right, and, and Jerry uh, beat me to the punch. And he was a chilling puncher, and 
Yeah. Uh, and that was only six weeks after winning the European yeah. and Commonwealth and British title. Well, uh, which has been know, devastating for you. Well, the problem was, Barry, I, I, uh, I went on holiday after the Joe Bugner fight. I lost five pounds from the fight to the holiday, and I got to come back into the gymnasium to train to fight Jerry Quarry. To be honest with you, it was a bad match. I should have been uh, at a longer rest until I had to fight uh, Ertain of Spain. And then you lost the European title against Ertain, yeah. and unfortunately, McAlinden for the British title. Yeah. And McAlinden wasn't fit, fit to lace my boots, to be honest with you. Uh, undid all the good work you'd done against Bogdan, didn't it? Uh, yeah, I think so. He did because uh, you know I finished off with three bad losses, really, and me me uh, career really was better than it showed in the finish. How do you view your career now, Jack? Looking back over it as a whole, it was an enjoyable career because I uh, thoroughly enjoyed boxing, and if I had my time over again, Barry, I'd be back tomorrow. Um, other than that, I could you know I ought to be managed a little bit better than I was. And tell me, you've invested your money wisely, I hope? Yeah, I've got property. I've got the property. And I've got a business with my wife, uh, Health and Beauty business in Kenilworth. And what, the uh, it's an unusual business. Tell us about it. It's Health and uh, Beauty business. Health it's turning tables, some beds, and beautician really work. And it's uh, called the Town Zone of Kenilworth. It's been lovely to have you, Jack.